Welcome to Healing Words. My name is Esther Yang, your host for today. And my guest today is Alan Steinfeld, the host and producer for New Realities Television, a program dedicated to exploring evolving human potential in an evolving world. New Realities Television explores the idea of how to become more conscious beings by presenting programs that invites viewers to look at automatic behaviors and take free reign of their body, mind, and spirit so that we can hope to inhabit and create a more peaceful reality for the planet. Now New Reality's website had become New York Portal for Body, Mind and Spirit Activities. I can't wait to hear all about it, Alan. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be a guest on someone else's show. So you've been a host too many times. I've been a host. Well, not too many. It's never too many. That's I could right. always be more of a host. Uh, but I've been doing it for 15 years. Wow. So tell us about New Realities and what we need to know about New Realities. Well, we have to understand what reality is, right? Right. Reality for me is the concept most people have of the world they're living in. So new realities means that perhaps what they think is the world is only a limited version of what they've been conditioned to see. Okay. So I think there's more to the world and to reality than we have been educated to be aware of. So new realities is bringing the awareness of a greater existence, whether that's spiritual or physical, as far as your health and your body and your relationship to that, or, or new sciences that are discovering um, deeper levels of physics or art. I think art is very important right. for the unfoldment of new realities because artists give us greater perceptions of what's out there and expand what's possible. So my show has been including what I feel has been the cutting edge right. of what's new, what's new, and how are we evolving as a conscious race of human beings. Well, let me ask, because if people are limited, mm. and they said that ignorance is bliss, yes. so now you're asking people to open up their consciousness. Right. And one, I want to know is how do we open up to that consciousness? Mm -hmm. Two, what if, if I don't want to open that consciousness and mm. what are consequences to not opening that consciousness? Those are great questions because first of all, I think ignorance is not bliss. I think ignorance is suffering. Okay. And because people aren't aware, they have developed attitudes about their lives and... The denial. The denial and the attachment to material form. What I present is a spiritual reality which says we are eternal beings. Right. And that awareness, not just saying it, but trying to bring people an awareness of what's possible, they open up a little more. Why do people don't want to open? Well, part of our human beingness is evolution. Mm -hmm. Those that don't want to open start to stagnate. I think part of who we are is constant movement. And if you say you don't want to open, then what are you afraid of finding? And how do we overcome the fear that's stopping us all from evolving? This is where we are at now in the 21st century. And that not being open to that new realities or the consciousness mm -hmm. cause stagnation, yes. would cause illness, yeah. I would think. Yes, emotional, physical, spiritual illness. Ill dis ease, not at ease. So, you know, there's two ways. You can stay where you are or you right. can leap into the unknown. What I feel New Realities is about and what I'm, you know, trying to learn every day for myself is how do we leap into the unknown, the next moment of our perception. See, this is my concern, though, because like most people, like, again, they have this challenge to open up to their consciousness. Yes. And then they have their friends. Yeah. And their families. Right. Because obviously when you open up to a new consciousness, like from this rose to that orchid, yeah. something has to transform here. Exactly. And that transformation might not fit into the vase anymore. But you know what? Are you living for yourself and your own evolution or are you living for your friends and your family? But this is everyone <laughs> has to make that decision. I understand that, but how do you, I guess my question is, what do you do or what, how do you encourage people to make a leap from to live for themselves and not to their friends and family because as you know, I mean, I'm Asian, so we have our own Asian culture. I know, 
it's a, it's another. Ch I mean, it's an on karma in of itself. It's a trap. All ball game. Well, I know the Asia. I mean, the Jewish culture, the Italian right. culture. We all are trapped by right. our families until we decide. You know what? My personal evolution. It may sound selfish. Is more important than trying to fit into my family. So I'm going to change. And if my family doesn't like that change, right. well, then we don't actually have a lot to talk about. So. But because I did make a change in my family, mm -hmm. people said, wow, maybe there's something to it. So they started to open up a little your more. Your family. My personal family, okay. yes. But see, again, how do you, um, I guess, educate your family to adapt to your transformation? It's what Gandhi said, you must become the change, you know? <laughs> so it's not telling them, it's seeing when you, you're opened up, right? right? You've gone beyond your Chinese background. You've opened up to spiritual ideas that are... My family have given up. <laughs> well, that's what happens. But, yeah. uh, but just imagine if you didn't do that right. and you would have stayed there. Just think you were trying to fit yourself into a box that didn't fit anymore. Right. And that's torture. Right, right. And ignorance is not bliss right. then. Ignorance is torture. Right. So I guess I was trying to yes. find out a shortcut because uh, from all your learning to acupuncturists mm -hmm. and studying and learning and right. seeking and for all the years that you put into, yes. you know, I was hoping that in the Healing Words show that yes. you can give sound bites oh, and shortcuts. Oh, some Healing Words. Right, like sound call. bites, you know, that said, oh, here's the shortcut for well, you. Well, I don't think there's a shortcut, first of all. But there is encouragement. So if you change or I change and people around you see, well, wow, they're happier, they're more satisfied with their life, maybe you can tell me what you've been doing to help that. So like uh, uh, Healing Words, because that's the name of the show, I would say is look at where you are and see if you're happy and see if it's possible to be happier. When I interviewed Marshall Rosenberg, he says, it's not, he's not about complaint or about... Um, things being bad, he started nonviolent communication and me and um, this person, we were doing interviews together. He says about how can we make life more wonderful and what's most alive in you? He asks people, what's most alive? What, what are you feeling that's most alive? And how can you make your life more wonderful? It's not that anything's bad, but so you ask your family, hey, how can life be more wonderful for you? And they might say, well, I'd like to study this, or I'd like to go there. And, but I'm about opening up to a spiritual reality, a spiritual understanding, meaning that we're more than our bodies. This is something that you've discovered right. in your personal work. But you had to make a leap, right? Absolutely. But the I leap was to... based on experience. Right, absolutely. So you had the experience, and then you to cognize the experience with, into your personality, right? right? You must have had an experience, right? Absolutely. So I think if we talk about new experiences to people, things that they can't fit into their old paradigm and say, okay, you can't fit into your old belief system, but maybe if you looked at this, it might fit into a belief system, might fit into a greater belief system that, that you're more than just your body. And I think also think that, you know, it's like energy, we attra like attracts like, mm -hmm. I would think, that the new reality is that when you become a new you, uh -huh. that you will also attract, I would think, yes. a new s team of friends. You absolutely do. You absolutely, but not only that... The you, frequencies shift. Yeah, and the frequencies around you shift. And since our fields and your fields with other people are interacting, they're actually picking up the new yeah. frequency. So they might get new ideas or new impressions that could be encouraged right. to, to sense. Because there's a new idea in physics, which is about field dynamics. Oh, the field is resonating. Our fields are resonating. That's why we're in conversation. That's why we can connect. But in your family and friends, as your field changes, as the frequencies change and as may be amplified to a higher level, that impacts other people. I think that's also a big concept in new realities, that understanding of field dynamics. And also, like you mentioned about art, and how do you think that art um, changed people's field? Art is a way of... Whether doing it yeah. or seeing it. Both, doing and seeing. What I feel the artist does is, is perceive new patterns, cognize new ways of looking at the world. And in these new mm, presentations of patterns about the world, you have to open up something to perceive it. You have to... Be willing? Be willing. What I call information 
is bringing in formation or bringing in patterns. There's a lot of data out there, but information is what we use, is what we inform, it's what we create new images. And when you bring in a new image right. into your brain, new neural nets open up to cognize those thoughts, those, those images. You know what I'm saying? Right. The brain connects in a new way, and when the brain connects in a new way, mind and consciousness expands. So you think that if someone see a Picasso, mm -hmm. their mind will be different? Absolutely. See, like Andy Warhol? Andy Warhol, thing. your mind is different too. But Picasso, people didn't understand what he was doing. He brought in all these different angles. But you look at this painting and you're trying to cognize, what is this guy talking about? What is he trying to show us? And then somewhere it clicks, oh, he's trying to show us more than one perspective at, at a time. In or an a, abstract perspective. In an abstract, and, and it's like I'm looking at you, but what if I was looking at you and also seeing the side of you, yeah. you know? It's like, how is that possible? But now we know it's possible because you being in a camera studio, we could see a couple of different sides. So those right. images and people trying to figure out what that meant may have opened up new areas in other fields like science, yeah. you know? Maybe Einstein was inspired by the new art, you know? Right. I, think, I think there's a whole feedback between art and science because the artists cognize new things and artists and scientists then pick up the, what the artist is doing. And there's a book called Art and Physics, Leonard Schlein. He writes about this comparison. And he says that um, the artist is the antenna of the race. He doesn't say that. That's a quote from Ezra Pound. Artists is the antenna of the race. They're picking up new information and bringing it into Earth. And their courage, because they think that Picasso had to have a tremendous amount of courage right. to do what he did, to, to receive the critic. Yes. You, you know, the same thing with new reality. Like, you talk about new reality mm -hmm. because you open up their consciousness, changing from the rose to the right. orchid, and having that transformation, right. and having people laugh at you. Of or course. Or saying, like, what, is that's not if art. The, if they're not laughing, then I'm not making an impact. No, I mean, <laughs> if they're not saying what's going on, then it's like, then it's not new. Right. You know, the new is what shocks people. It's what, um, you know, sets them back. And that's what I'm looking for. What is it that people have yet to integrate or even deny? The more they deny, the more true I, probably, I think it probably is. Schopenhauer says that new ideas are first ignored, then they're totally ridiculed, and then they're accepted as fact, as evident. So now people are finally trying to understand what is abstract art all about. Or let's take Freudian theory. You know, when it first came out, no one accepted that as a possibility. And now, even if you never even heard of Freud, you understand the concepts of or Oedipus. Jung, and, or Jung, too. Jung is actually still making an impact on our collective culture. So that's what I'm looking for. There's so many new, great thinkers. Yeah, I always feel like uh, concerned as we go through and educating people, saying yes. that, hey, you can transform, you'll get better, you'll do this. But I would think that how do you able to educate them to be grounded while they're going through this bumpy road well, and being it is laughed bumpy. at. It is bumpy. I say just open your mind to the possibility. As soon as you say something's impossible, you close down those neural nets that would consider that possibility. You're actually shutting off your brain. But when you say, okay, I'll consider, like UFOs, maybe they're there, maybe they're not, but let's consider and I do a lot of shows on UFOs. Let's consider the fact that perhaps we're not alone in the universe. Let's consider the fact that maybe we've been visited, perhaps. Let's just open our mind to that possibility. When you open your mind, you start to expand your consciousness. Whether or not it's true, when you consider the possibility, you've expanded who you are as a thinking, conscious being. You know, so I've been to the crop circles in England. Do you know what those are? Yes, patterns in yes, that's amazing. It's totally amazing and totally unexplainable. And I think they're not made by humans. I'm 99% right. sure. I can't say I'm 100% because I haven't seen them made in person. But these are patterns that some greater consciousness is imparting to the earth and to the people on earth in order to cognize new realities by looking at these patterns of and some of the buildings the, oh, that was built. The old temples. Yeah. Yeah, the old temples. Indonesia. Tempo. There's a Indonesia, whole bunch all, of temples that we have absolutely no idea how we got there. Right. We don't know how they got there. but Or how, what type of machinery they didn't have to be able to carry 
that's beyond manpower to do. The Great Pyramids. Right. Like, but I'm sure those old temples in Indonesia are based on sacred geometry. Yes. You know, I'm sure they are because all the great temples are based on sacred geometry. And sacred geometry, which I have done shows about, is how we resonate to, to something deeper in ourselves. So do you think the new reality is also meant like by words or do you think that it also uh, with symbols? Absolutely with symbols, yes. Symbols are even come before the words, you know. Symbols are, are direct transmissions to our right brain. We have, you know, the left and right brain. Right. The left brain thinks of the world in words and the right brain is with symbols and direct knowing. So symbols impact us first, like the symbols of the crop circles. They impact us to open up to these new ideas. Whether or not we're conscious of these new ideas, a seed is planted. And that's all I'm trying to do is plant a seed into something new. Plant a seed in, you, in someone else's soul to learn something new. Yeah. So Ellen, tell us oh. more about before your new realities. Well, that's good. Thank you for asking that because it's been a journey getting to this idea about this program. I, I came to New York City and I was interested in the art scene, the avant-garde art scene. And avant-garde was what was new, what was the... That's why you know so much about art. That is, because I think artists really motivate us. So I, I am an artist. I mean, I think uh, creativity, and this is also part of activating those new ideas, the cr pulling out the creative potential inside all of us. We're all artists. We're all creative beings. The fact that we have dreams opens us up to these ideas of creativity that are deep in us. So I came to New York after college and did a lot of photography, but I wasn't, I, I never had enough money for new films, <laughs> for a new roll of film. So what I would do is take a roll and then would rewind it and take a picture again on the same roll of film. Wow. And so I get these very interesting double exposures, you know? And then I remember hearing somebody say, two things can exist in the same place at the same time. But then I would look at these pictures and I was saying, well, look, there are two things existing in the same place at the same time, actually creating a third thing. And I just got this idea of intersecting realities from these photographs that I was taking. And and this new, these new realities were being created in photography. And I can show you some of my images that helped inspire me then going from photography to video to ideas to concepts to people that were bringing in the things people said weren't possible. It started with art and photography and expanded out there. So who are the people that in your journey mm -hmm. kind of guide you into who you are now? Well, that's also a great question. Thank you for asking that. So with this idea of right. these new realities, I started to like um, have different experiences, out-of-body experiences, and I was looking for teachers that could explain what was going on, or books, and a lot of people in the 80s were following the guru type of thing, and I never liked, I never wanted to do the guru trip following someone else, so I looked for teachers that I didn't have to follow or wear their picture. So channeling was a big thing in the, in the early 80s right. when I was looking for uh, kind of spiritual avenues to kind of open up and confirm my experiences. So I met a bunch of channels, Ramtha, who's this 35,000 year old Atlantean warrior. And you would sit in this audience with this being and this woman would go into like a trance or leave her body and this other being would come through, which is totally it is. I mean, at that time, right? It's still but that way. But the information was still good. The information was amazing. Very high truth for me. It resonated on the soul level. And, right. and when I had a you know, one to one contact, it was like I felt transformed. I realized I was more than just my body. We have a body, but there was a spiritual reality that I. Um, consciously became aware of that was transforming so that was a big part that was an opening because what I considered impossible like a non-physical consciousness channeling that whole idea suddenly became a possibility 
And when that door opened, lots of doors opened to the whole metaphysical history of not just the Eastern traditions, which everyone's aware of, but the Western traditions, the Theosophical Society, you know, Alice Bailey and her group, Rudolf Steiner, the, the occult wisdom, hermetic philosophy, the ancient Egyptians, you know, the hermetic tradition. Right. There's a whole school of Western mysticism that I think we've ignored, Kabbalah. These are Western traditions that are just as great as the Eastern traditions right. and just as mystical. And actually, somehow we're more connected to, in the West, I think, because I think science, you know, chemistry grew out of alchemy and astronomy grew out of astrology. So what we embrace today is just the surface of these deeper traditions. And that all became very apparent to me when I started this spiritual journey, that there were deeper realities that affect us that we um, have ignored. But see, I mean, weren't you scared, though? I mean, like you just out of, out of body experience? Because you know nothing at that point, right? right? You know nothing, and all of a sudden, your body's going or your soul's going to another yeah. la-la land or whatever yeah, we want yeah, to yeah, call yeah. it. But, I mean, somehow in your old self, mm -hmm. there must be some terrifying thought. Or like Some people are scared with their first out-of-body experiences. You were I, never scared? You know why? I think it, my actual journey started when I was really young. I had a hard time falling asleep as a child. I remember like two or three years old. And just telling to myself, okay, I'll close my eyes and just stare straight ahead. And I used to get this like white light, you know, vision when I was really young, like two and three years old, because I just was so hyper as a child. I put that all into like this kind of meditation that I taught myself. So that opened my consciousness to be more expanded. So when I had an out-of-body experience, it... It wasn't that weird for me. It was like your childhood memory. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like I was been preparing for it. So uh -huh. Other people are freaked out because suddenly they realize that they're not in their bodies. Also, I had like UFO type experiences. Those were a little weird, though. Those but, were. I but again, your UFO experience. But how do you do you recommend people to journal it? Because, definitely journal it. Yeah. Because you know the the concept is so fast and so quick and and the symbols and you yes. don't get the symbols and yes. what if, if you don't have your friends in your journey yet yes. and what do you recommend people to cope well that's why i do my show because the more this information is out there when in the is public, your show my show's monday night on 9 p.m channel 57 but i do my show so people can start to hear about these ideas so when they do have an experience there's a it's reference. It's not so right. weird. It's like, oh, I heard that on the weird show I listened to. You're a weird person in this right. world. And maybe there's some truth to right. uh, this. this comforting. Site. Yeah, it is comforting. So the more we um, share, like your experiences, you're a therapist and you've had spiritual and psychic experiences, but you probably keep a lot of it to yourself. Usually. It's but not something, you, you know, people right. usually get. But we need yes, to come out. That's right. And share it so other people can start to share what they are instead of putting in a little box of weird and they can start to say, oh, this happened to me and this happened to me. And then we start to change the culture right. that way. And that's what's so exciting for me. Right. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. So, so you recommend people to do a journal. And definitely or, journal or just or watch your show. And or, so that <laughs> or go to my website, newrealities.com. Besides just people, mm. what other messages do you think that people uh, can? We have a greater facility inside us that we have been aware of, that we've been educated to know, and there's ways of tapping into who we really are on a much deeper level by listening to the inner voice, by meditating, by um, being open to possibilities. Those are the elements that I'm really looking for. It's not so much the guests, it's what those guests infuse. And listening to the signals yes. and the guidance. And trusting, trusting your intuition and guidance. Many people get guided and they just say, oh, what is that? So the guidance, like, never throw a vase at somebody. Would you follow that guidance? Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's probably just simple. But other things like, oh, you get a pull to go someplace or you uh, to meet somebody or to go into a, a restaurant for whatever reason. You see, a lot of this doesn't make sense to the logical mind. We have to override sometimes, not always. You don't want to jump off a building. Right, of course. But you, um, you have to trust there's an inner knowing 
and something that is beyond the left brain ego personality. The ego is always trying to look for logical ways of doing things. And this other spiritual awareness, there's sometimes no logic. There's no rationale until later on you say, oh, I went there because I met this person and this happened and this and this and this. And it's all for evolution. So it's trusting who we are, who you are. Which is your mission. Which is our, all our missions, all our really. Missions for, like everyone, if everyone followed their own missions. Yes, we'd be happy, healthy. And more peaceful. And peaceful. More in harmony. Those are the elements I'm trying to bring forth. Well, the reality of consciousness is that that's all there is. It's, that is the, actually the only reality. And that comes through a kind of sensorial um, interchange with, with awareness. So what do we feel really is the new reality. How are we feeling as we interact with other people? We have to pay more attention to these signals inside of us. These, the inner voice, the, the, little, but the, the, the silence the, sometimes. But the feelings that may actually not have words. That is how I think the greater consciousness speaks to us. It's not just words or voices. It's, it's something beyond that. It's what I call feelings. Not in the uh, big emotional sense like sadness and anger. Those are feelings. Right. But the subtleties of awareness. This is what I think the artist is trying to communicate, the, the subtleties of innate feelings that they're trying to express so other people get that awareness of those feelings themselves. That, so it starts in a place beyond words because there are no words for truly these feelings of consciousness. And there are no words in colors too. Right. And it's like, um, this is our evolution, is to become more and more attuned to the subtleties of what we're feeling. That's why I think the role of the artist is so important, because they bring forth, beyond any vocabulary, new communications of the subtleties of what it is to be human. Well, That's thank you, Alan. Thank you. You're a you, great host. And you're a great guest, well, you know. We'll too much it. to learn. Now <laughs> I have to regroup. Thank you so well, much. Well, hopefully your realities are new for you, too. It's already changed. Good. <laughs> Maybe you'll leave a different person. Maybe we'll all be different people. That, isn't that exciting? Yeah. No, do you like, I guess the, my last question will be, do you like, I mean, I know the answer, but I really yeah. want to hear from you. Do you like yourself now? than when you were struggling? No, I've liked, I, it's not about liking myself more. I've always liked, loved who I am, but I see each moment is giving me more. So each moment I feel is, is even, even better than the last moment. Like you, you add an, another richness to your facets. In every moment I'm trying to do that. I'm not always oh, yeah. doing it, to be honest, but I'm trying to add something more just by... You asking me these questions, I've learned more about myself. Well, I, clearly I learned more about myself, too. Okay, and we learned more about each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Alan. Thank you. This is it. It's us together and alone and separate and together. Thank you. This has been fun. Thank you for watching Healing Words, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.